Welcome back for Exodus chapter 9. Okay, so yesterday we saw the frogs, the gnats, and the flies. And yet again, Pharaoh broke his promise about letting the Israelites go. So God's got more up his sleeve for the Pharaoh today. Verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and speak to him. Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will come with the very severe pestilence, which was a horrific disease, on your livestock, which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks. And livestock pretty much was an anchor to survival and livelihood in this culture, similar to the water from the Nile with the blood. Verse 4, But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing will die of all that belongs to the sons of Israel. Verse 5, The Lord set a definite time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died. But of the livestock of the sons of Israel, not one died. Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not even one of the livestock of Israel dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves handfuls of soot from um, a kiln, and that was ash, like ashes from a furnace, and let Moses throw it toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and will become boils breaking out with sores on man and beast through all the land of Egypt. Verse 10. So they took soot from a kiln and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it toward the sky, and it became boils breaking out with sores on man and beast. So just picture this in your mind. It'd be like being in the Staples Center and LeBron James throwing up dust and everybody in there getting boils. All right, verse 11. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians as well as on all the Egyptians. So where's your secret arts now, uh, magicians? Verse 12. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Verse 14. For this time I will send my plagues on you and your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For if by now I had put forth my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, you would then have been cut off from the earth. So God's saying uh, that Pharaoh hadn't seen anything yet and that he's lucky God hasn't released his full fury on him. Verse 16, But indeed, for this reason I have allowed you to remain, in order to show you my power and in order to proclaim my name through all the earth. Still you exalt yourself against my people by not letting them go. Romans chapter 9 verse 17 says in regards to Pharaoh that for this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. Uh, something, something to chew on there. Verse 18. Behold, about this time tomorrow I will send a very heavy hail such as has not been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Verse 19. Now therefore send, bring your livestock and whatever you have in the field to safety. Every man and beast that is found in the field and is not brought home, when the hail comes down on them, will die. The one among the servants of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord made his servants and his livestock flee into the houses. But he who paid no regard to the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. Now the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky, that hail may fall on all the land of Egypt on man and on beast, and on every plant of the field throughout the land of Egypt. Verse 23. Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran down to the earth. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail, very severe, such as had not been in all the land of Texas, I mean Egypt, since it became a nation. The hail struck all that was in the field through all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. The hail also struck every plant of the field and shattered every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, <coughs> excuse me, Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, there was no hail. 
I mean, you kind of feel bad for the stubbornness and ignorance of these people, but man, this would be pretty sweet to see. Verse 27. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one, and I and my people are the wicked ones. Make supplication to the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail, and I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be hail no longer, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Uh, verse 31. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in bud, uh, meaning that the crops were destroyed. Okay, and this just, uh, Pharaoh's response here just goes to show that there's a big difference between being sorry that you got in trouble versus godly sorrow, uh, versus regret and repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 teaches us that godly sorrow will bring repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but that worldly sorrow brings death. One is sad for uh, punishment and the other is saddened over sin. There's a big difference. A good example of godly sorrow is seen in many of the Psalms of King David, such as Psalm chapter 6, where he says, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Um, so Pharaoh obviously had worldly sorrow about losing material necessities rather than his sinful stubbornness. Verse 32, But the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they ripened late. Uh, so this left just a little wiggle room for Pharaoh to repent, and save some of his crops. Verse 33. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and the hail ceased, and rain no longer poured on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Come on, man. <laughs> Verse 35. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the sons of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Wow, Pharaoh. Come on. Wow. All right. So let's see uh, what he does tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. God bless you. Have a good day. Take care.